Shadow boxing. Come on, I'm so ready for one on one explained. So ready! One on one explained! Oh god. One oh one explains malefactors. Questions, comments, japes, explanations, you all know the drill. Let's go. Guide Hornet begins us off. Is that even a phrase? I don't know, it is now. Says, I've always wondered if you could explode if you ate too much. Well, let's ask our good friends, Monty Python. Yes, yes you could. Mighty Pi tapped their fingers all over a keyboard and this is the result. This show seems too childish. Underscore, underscore. Little uh, speech bubble thing. <laughs> You're too childish. Can you smell? <laughs> Pyrovision says, I've always wondered what mutant power Sam has. I mean, I don't shout about it often because it's quite embarrassing, but I uh, do have the ability to arouse anybody with just one look. Yeah. I'll do it now, you ready? Here we go. It's all in uh, the eyes. <laughs> My eye! <laughs> if only somebody could ask why we feel pain, I could maybe investigate it. Son of a bitch, they have. Yes, that's right, Chill Zander has given us our question this week, which is... I've always won. Why do we feel pain? So, Pain, an American rapper with a big hat who loves to be on boats and loves to auto-tune himself. Who... Oh no, sorry, that's T-Pain. Oh, f I'm gonna have to redo my whole research. Clive, this is on you. Hold on. Oh, phew. We're back. Pain, we've all felt it and it's been a bit of a nuisance, like a big pigeon. Haven't we all felt pigeons? No. Okay. But pain bloody hurts, it must be said. I mean, that's the nature of pain. But why, oh why, do we feel it? Why haven't we evolved ourselves out of pain, so to speak? Well, it's important. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's just imagine you've been doing your annual fun run to benefit disadvantaged otters, and you've reached the finish line, but what's this? You've fallen over onto a nearby child's katana. It's always going to happen, isn't it? Obviously, you're in a lot of pain. But what's going on in there? In your body, I mean. Nociceptor receptors, try I'm saying that after 12 bevies, are in the end of our skin and our nerves made to feel pain. They exist to send alarm bells to our brain along our nerves, up our spinal column and straight to our brain. Who decides what to do from there? Like crying or screaming or calling for your mummy. <clears throat> So up the signal goes from the katana wound through the sexy roller coaster of your body, without a GPS, impressively, before hitting its destination, the brain. Your neurons and cortex in your brain gets to thinking about how to respond once the message has been received, all within a fraction of a second, which is jolly impressive. Oh, that's great, but when I do something else within a fraction of a second, no, it's disappointing. This includes a group of cells called the salience network, which is basically the bit that dictates what you're paying attention to out of all the stimuli around you. This makes you decide to pay attention to the thing that's causing harm to your body, in this case, that gaping katana hole. Your brain then flanks the source of this pain immediately in an attempt to tell you to get your f***ing act together. This is killing cells, bro. I'm not sure why your brain speaks like that, but hey, don't shoot the messenger. So, all in all, a job well done from your cells, nerves, spinal cord, and brain. Good job, guys. Good job. But why is our body hardwired to make us hurt? Just so REM could sing a song. Oh, let yourself go. Well, no. At an instinctual level, our brain and nerves make us feel pain to basically save us from ourselves. To tell us that things that can harm our body will harm our body and to warn us from repeating them again. It's basically there because, well, us humans are idiots and we can hurt ourselves by accident all the time. Just think about when you were little and you were all new to the world, stumbling around like an absolute idiot full of gay abandon. Oh, how sweet. 
Babies are idiots and need to be shown that things are banned for them. You can't really tell them at that age because of the, you know, not understanding anything you're saying kind of thing. So, when you see a candle in the middle of the room, you don't quite question why the hell your parents have left a naked flame in the middle of the room with a baby there, but you go towards it because it looks all pretty. Baby's hand goes near it and bosh, it gets a little baby shock on its little baby hand from the heat, starts crying and probably shits itself too. Now, obviously that's an extreme example, and it's not like all babies go through some sort of weird conveyor belt of everything that could possibly hurt them. That would be awful. Don't do that if you're a parent, okay? But that baby will bank that information and will now know to be more careful around candles and fire because it's all hot. Pain helps us on a primal level to protect ourselves against potential damage. Without pain, we'd all be putting our hands on stoves or stubbing our toes or hitting our knees with hammers willy-nilly because we wouldn't know it's actually destroying cells in our body. Our brains and bodies are told to tell us that destroying our cells and bodies is bad and naughty, almost like being sent to the naughty step. And that is why we feel pain. If you, that's right, you there, want your 101 Explains question answered, then tweet us at 101facts1 or comment below with I've always wondered and your question lickety split. Right, all this thinking about pain has made me think of a new poem sent to Jennifer Lawrence to make her love me again. I really liked you when you played Katniss. Now, it hurts when I don't get that kiss. Uh, see? Catch you in a bit, motherfuckers. Toodaloo!